Welcome to Learning Lovecraft with Ken James and Jason McKittrick, brought to you by CryptoCurium. I was far from home, and the spell of the eastern sea was upon me. In the twilight, I heard it pounding on the rocks, and I knew it lay just over the hill, where the twisting willows writhed against the clearing sky and the first stars of evening. And because my fathers had called me to the old town beyond, I pushed on through the shallow, new-fallen snow, along the road that soared lonely up to where old Deberon twinkled among the trees. On toward the very ancient town I had never seen, but had often dreamed of. Good evening, and welcome to another episode of Learning Lovecraft. I am your host, Jason McKittrick, and joining me, as always, the traveler of the Eldritch Path, Mr. Ken James. Good evening, folks. And tonight, as always, we are delving into the mysterious and otherworldly realm of H.P. Lovecraft's cosmic horror. Our focus tonight, the festival. Ooh, I don't know. I didn't know what noise to make there. So Yeah, there. that's a festival noise. Yeah. Uh, you also heard in that opening passage the vocal stylings of our good friend, Greg Oliver Bodine, from previous Yo. episodes, who will be narrating the passages for this episode. G-O-B-D, what up? What's up? So, uh, Merry Christmas, Ken. Hey, Merry, Merry Christmas to you too, buddy. Yeah, this is uh, this is Lovecraft's Christmas story. Is this halfway? Are we halfway to Christmas? Is that what this is? Oh, God, is it? Yeah, it's June, right? Is it July? I don't know. Uh, it's June, but... Is it? I thought that's why they always did like the, the Christmas in July show. Right, well, I'm just saying I'm saying we're in June. I don't know if it's July or not. I'm just saying... I don't. Yes, we are in June, so yeah, I don't... <laughs> this is very not, not Christmassy yeah. outside at all. <clears throat> No, no, I was just uh, sweating over a grill right before, <laughs> right before we recorded this. So, uh, yeah. very not Christmassy, but no. but a welcome cheer. Why not, right? Yeah, right. Um, I actually read this story every year on Christmas Eve. It's a tradition. It's been going about fifteen years, and um, I love this story. It's a good. It's one of my, it's one of my favorites. It's uh, it's some H.P. Lovecraft comfort food. First one I ever heard. First one I ever. Uh... Yeah, I didn't read it because I was sound designing our uh, episode for our yeah. dangerous podcast. Yeah, I think we went over that a little bit last time. Yeah. Um, but uh, before we got that 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 fun little opening passage, uh, in the beginning of the story, we have this uh, this Latin passage. I'm going to try it. I'm going to try it. Go for it. Uh, Efficiunt demones et quae non sunt, sic tamien quasi sint caspicienda hominibus exhibiant. A portal just opened up behind you, by the way. I don't know. Well, what was, happens. That, was that on purpose or I don't know, man. Uh, and that was by Lactantius. You know? But translated, that's demons make it so that the human beings they appear to be what they really are aren't. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> what was it? I think Lact- it's- Lactavia? What was this? What was his name? Uh Lactantius. Lactantius. Yeah. Philosopher who mainly focused on lactating, apparently. Um, he has an OnlyFans now, so <laughs> there you go. <laughs> nice. <laughs> no, I think it's just the idea that you know um, demons or or you know these otherworldly creatures um, do things to make themselves appear to be human. Yeah, I, would, I think that goes with the uh, theme of the story. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what we were going for there. Yeah, yeah. So we get that um, we get that opening uh, passage by Howard. We got some major uh, got some major mood building there, huh? Um, mm-hmm. Being called home for the uh, for the holiday season. <laughs> yeah. um, you know, we, he he can't help himself. You know, talking about the stars, the sea. Um, you know, the, the newly fallen snow, uh, those old buildings, and uh, you know, we're 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 brought right into it, and. Um, you know, like I said, this is a Christmas classic, everybody. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you you all should read this every uh, Christmas Eve because honestly, it just it just makes me feel good. Yeah. Very. Uh, if you were a fan of Krampus, the movie, the film, mm, mm. lots of lots of uh, weird traditions. Weird tradition. Lots of vibey. Things. Yeah. Lots of vibey. We'll we'll talk about it when we get to uh, yeah. descriptions of things here where mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that reminded me of. Yes. Um. This is going to be. Uh, reading heavy because there's so much great stuff in here so mm-hmm. we'll let howard or i should say greg uh let uh set the tone here it was the yuletide that men call christmas though they know in their hearts it is older than bethlehem and babylon older than memphis 
and mankind. It was the Yuletide, and I'd come at last to the ancient sea town, where my people had dwelt and kept festival in the elder time, when festival was forbidden, where also they had commanded their sons to keep festival once every century, that the memory of primal secrets might not be forgotten. Mine were an old people, and were old even when this land was settled three hundred years before, and they were strange, because they had come as dark furtive folk from opiate southern gardens of orchids, and spoke in another tongue before they learnt the tongue of the blue-eyed fishers. And now they were scattered, and shared only the rituals of mysteries that none living could understand. I was the only one who came back that night to the old fishing town as legend bad, for only the poor and the lonely remember. All right. The um, elder times. The know? elder times. Um, and the Yule Tide. I, I love that. Even though something like you got to love about Howard, the man loves New England and loves New England traditions, but he can't let it just be Christmas because that's too Christian for him. So he's right. like, nope. We're going to talk about what yeah. was it before. It was he's the like, Yule Tide. He's like, it's before that. It's before yeah. it was Christmas. You know, your jolly ho ho hoes and you yeah. bullshit. <laughs> Oh, cute Christmas tree. Yeah. yeah, he's like, what does that represent? Probably, you know, something that people were, you know, massacred on or something. Yeah. Where you know. they would like worship to and then gifts would tumble out of it. Right. Right. Yeah. Um, I'm thinking the beginning of Batman Returns. Well, you have to. <laughs> you absolutely have to. Oh, but you can. Oh, but you will. <laughs> uh, and he, he in this this passage here, you know, talking about these, uh, how old Yule, Yuletide is and that's an old festival that, you know, uh, it, it's it's this old festival that was forbidden at a time and it's you know kind of like you know when you think of christmas now it's like okay this is what we do we exchange the presents we put up the tree we do all that the all that fun stuff but what does it represent you know what was there before right you know what what kind of thing are we really celebrating yeah because i mean everything kind of goes back to like some kind of tradition that was done by the people in the elder times which mm -hmm. has trickled down and changed there's some things that you you can obviously tell that were like were there but how much of it has changed via all the years word of tradition and oral tradition that's passed it down because right. obviously the, all the old 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 writings are are gone and unless mm -hmm. you you know can make your way to some ancient church and go underneath it and maybe interact with these you know Hey, you're in luck. We might keep, just do yeah, that. Keepers of tradition. <laughs> but all that stuff kind of, you know, it, it's we have modern versions of these holidays, which even the names have changed. Yeah. Even the it, deities have changed. Right. No, uh, different names, but it's all that underlying of, the, you know, I think he's putting forth that, you know, he the, even this jolly holiday that people, for the most part, uh, celebrate. Uh, there's something underlying, right? There's some kind mm -hmm. of like, you know, air of, you know, like menace under it. And it even says that, you know, that these these rituals and mysteries that none living could understand. Right. So it's, you know, it, it, he's laying it all out. And, and you got to you got to appreciate that, that under underneath all these, you know, this New England tradition and all these things that we do, there's Howard can't just let it be. He's like, no, 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 there's got to be some kind of something. Else. Yeah. He's like, no, 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 no. He's like, I already, I already started, I already started messing around with rats in the walls. He's like, there cannot be, you know, there's no more holes than anything under anything. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but before we go any further, um, we've got another unnamed narrator, Ken. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I just want to go Charles. I like Charles. Charles Dickens. Charles, yeah. you know, the yeah. forefather of our immortal Christmas classics. Yeah. You know, or classic. Yeah. Ghost story. We can go with Charles. Chuck, if we're feeling us Chuck, early. Yeah, yeah. Charles, yeah. I like that. Yeah. Charlie. No, we already, you know, we did already go with Charlie or Charles, didn't we? No, we were gonna, but then I said that it was too Charlie much. Charlie Manuel, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and he was too, yeah. uh, he was too in the news. So we can go yeah. with Charles. Charles. Only Charles. Only I like Charles. It. He yep. would appreciate that too. Yeah. <laughs> so Charles, from here on out, I'll make a little note there. Um, he's making his first visit to Kingsport, and um, this is that ancient sea town um, that he's, you know, uh, describing. Um, and it's interesting because he um, he talks about that this is, you know, he was told to come back here by someone in his family. They don't really go into too much detail, but as soon as he gets there, there's very little sign of, you know, any habitation. Uh, right. It seems like it's out of date and almost deserted. He does see some lights in the windows, but um, 
it's very not welcoming. And he even says that he he would have thought as he came into the town or saw the town, he would hear noises of festival. You know, yeah. maybe some like church music or people outside. Something. He hears nothing. Yeah. Um, and we get this next passage. Snowy Kingsport, with its ancient veins and steeples, ridge poles and chimney pots, wharves and small bridges, willow trees and graveyards, endless labyrinths of steep, narrow, crooked streets, and dizzy church crown central peak that time durst not touch. Ceaseless mazes of colonial houses piled and scattered at all angles and levels like a child's disordered blocks. Antiquity, hovering on gray wings over winter-whitened gables and gambrel roofs. Fan lights and small paned windows, one by one, gleaming out in the cold dusk to join Orion and the archaic stars. And against the rotting wharves, the sea pounded. The secretive, immemorial sea, out of which the people had come in the elder time. Elder times again, man. Yeah, uh, this is, you know, this is tradition. He really is pounding in the whole idea of tradition in this town where seemingly, um, and when I was rereading this again, because I've read this so many times, I was like, man, this really does, at this point, and even though it goes into it further later on, this really does uh, start touching on some rats in the wall stuff. Okay, Just from a yeah. different angle, though, if you think yeah, about it, right? right? No, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. So, um, and this is also the building of this, of like this witch haunted town that we're going to come back to, um, that Lovecraft uses quite a bit going further. And um, later it'll shift to the town of Arkham, but this is a return to Kingsport um, that we had first visited, if you remember, in the Terrible Old Man. Okay. Yeah, I, I know. It's okay. Been a while. Yeah, <laughs> this is the it, town that he was in. It's just a name, and he has his name for names for towns. Um, Kings. I gotta, I gotta start making like my own codex of references of things to keep at, you know, arm's length at all times. Like a bag of things to pull out and go. Oh, that's where that's from. Oh, okay. You should, and you should let us in on it. Yeah, I should. No, man. That, well, that, that that's. I mean, I'll, I'll be here to remind you. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this is Kingsport once again, and I'm just mentioning it because the description of it almost mirrors what Arkham will be, kind of. I mean, we're getting there. Uh, th this town very much reminds me of um, the town in the beginning of uh, Bloodborne. The description. Okay. Yeah, well. Oh, but Bloodborne. <laughs> Such a wonderful game, but... I mean, I mean, it is. It is. Uh, we have a lot more great language coming up, so I, I, I told you folks this would be a little, little passage heavy, but I got, I got another one j just for now. Just one more here, so. Beside the road at its crest, a still higher summit rose, bleak and windswept, and I saw that it was a burying ground, where black gravestones stuck ghoulishly through the snow, like the decayed fingernails of a gigantic corpse. The printless road was very lonely, and sometimes I thought I heard a distant, horrible creaking, as of a gibbet in the wind. They had hanged four kinsmen of mine for witchcraft in 1692, but I did not know just where. The God, you gotta love the fingernail. The fingernail gravestone reference is money. Yep. Like, that's just, that's wonderful. It is. Um, and I, I got to visit there. I'll, I'll talk about it at the end. Uh, this the exact place that he's talking about because he, he pulls from a town, which I'll discuss mm -hmm. in a moment. Um, but you gotta love that right after that he has to pull in the uh, that they hanged four of his kinsmen <laughs> for witchcraft in 1692. It's like yeah. God, I love that. It's like that imagery of the ghoulish, uh, the ghoulish decayed fingernails of a corpse, and then um, you know, and then he just throws out, you know, oh, you know. By the way, my cursed ancestry, uh, they they hung a few of my kinsmen for witchcraft. <laughs> so there's something in there. There's something stuck with me that you know that there's something in my bloodline or my my lineage that is a little little bit spooky. Yep, and a little uh, bit occulty. Yeah, yeah, and you're certainly going to see more of this as we go forward. Um, and not that you haven't seen already with a few of the stories, but cursed lineages is, is something that he's certainly um, you know interested in. You know, considering how not great his his family history was. So. Um, real quick, uh, this story was inspired 
partly by Lovecraft's first trip to Marblehead, Massachusetts, which is the town I just mentioned. Just want to give some folks some little background on that. Sure. Um, <laughs> how about this quote? Peep this quote, Ken. Mm-hmm. Lovecraft later called the, that visit, quote, the most powerful single emotional climax experienced during my nearly 40 years of existence. Was the high tide of his life, apparently. Yeah, up until that point. Yeah. Um, he called it in a flash all the past of New England and all the past of Old England and all the past of Anglo Saxondom, Saxondom, excuse me, and the Western world swept over me and identified me with the stupendous totality of all things in such a way as it never did before and never did again. That was the high tide of my life. Yeah. This, yeah, uh, I mean, that's just him writing about it, right? Like, that's yeah. just him talking about it. Like, yeah, yeah, now you know why he writes the way he does. He talked yes. like that, you know? Yeah. yeah, that was in a letter. Um, he, he loved this place, and I gotta say, it's it's spectacular. I mean, it's 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 just an old colonial village that's right, right next to Salem. Um, there you go, there you have it. Yeah, and um, it's 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 gorgeous and it's it the streets are very narrow um it's 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 essentially what he kind of this there's no hill though but it's and it's right on the ocean it's you know it, it's gorgeous and um some uh, notes from uh, our boy joshi haven't talked about him in a bit well no we uh, haven't. he said that the narrator's path through kingsport corresponds to a route to the center of Mar- marblehead uh, the house with the overhanging second story is probably based on a, a specific building. Uh, the church is a specific, it was a specific St. Michael's Episcopal Church on Frog Lane. Uh, it's the oldest Anglican church in New England. Uh, all this stuff. So, um, you know, th- there's even the church even has a crypt, just like what he says later on in the story. Right. So, um, it's you know, this 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 checked all of uh, Howard's boxes. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Yeah, he was like, I belong here. Yeah, he swiped right. Did you swipe right? He swiped right on this town big time. Sure. I don't know either. I I just hear people say it all the time, so I love yeah. you. That yeah, I, yeah. You know, to be relatable. I don't know, to the kids. Yeah, you're trying to I, I you're know. trying to get in with the kids. We get it. You want you want to be hip. Yep. Um so yeah, just a little bit on Marblehead, because it was such a big deal for him. Um I just thought it would be a little little, little primer on the town and yeah, I'll talk about I'll talk about some more about it at the end of my personal experience there at the okay. end. Okay. Okay. So uh, Charles uh, has a map, all right, and he's told by his people that um, when he comes to the town here, that they will know him. All right, they're gonna, they're, and they're, they're not in that they're expecting him. Yeah. So after a little bit of travel, he locates his relative's house, uh, which has this weird overhanging second story, which is kind of I guess it's a very old style. It's almost like you would see yeah. in like England or something. It has that like it overhangs? I know exactly what he's talking about. So, um, and he's greeted by this old man that mm. doesn't speak mm. um flabby hands mm, gloved. curiously <laughs> gloved and a you know. bland face mm. and right off the bat he says that he suspects that it's um a fiendishly cunning mask weird yeah but he go but you know he goes inside yeah <laughs> Oh, I'd sick like, mask uh, with your weird hands, you know, like gloved, right. flabby hands. Right. And he has a little writing tablet that he kind of says to him that he's 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 dumb. So I guess it just means that he's mute. <laughs> yeah. Kind of. Uh, I was getting kind of an architectural vibe of uh, like Eric Zahn mm. with the uh, the way the buildings were shaped, even the overhang. So that could just yeah. be him taking it from the, um, you know, the village that in real life or he's kind of connecting it with, you know, weird stuff happens here, too. So I don't know. I kind of. Yeah, no, I, I totally get that. And I think he also likes to kind of have like a um a correlation between like weird architecture that's kind of falling over as as almost like the morals of these people are also kind of like right. falling over as well. Like he 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 likes to do that. Like the architecture will mirror something with the character, main character, or something that's going on with the story. Right. So yeah, or maybe if, like the buildings are almost kind of top heavy because the stuff underneath is kind of the foundations kind of maybe maybe worm cultists maybe I don't know I don't honey, know I didn't read the rest of the story yet it was honeycomb no <laughs> hey that that's another thing that he pulled from. we'll get to it but he also yeah. pulled that from the lurking fear yeah he likes his stuff man he comes up with something he's like I'm gonna use that again yeah. So um, there's also a woman inside who's spinning yarn who also looks equally freakish. <laughs> and why you would go, you know what this reminds me of uh, real quick, uh, Halloween 3, you know, there's that, that that automaton that's spinning the yarn. Yes. 
that's what that reminds me of. Like that that thing is sitting in there, and you're just like, yeah, this is fine. Yeah, cool. <laughs> I'm not worried about that ominous thing at all. No, not at all. So brings him inside, um, kind of uh, communicates in his way that you know got to wait a little while um and you know motions to him that hey there's you know there's a pile of books over here why don't you uh check out some of these books yeah. and um sees a whole whole slew of uh weirdo titles but what what pops out at him the necronomicon, the necronomicon. yeah um the translation by uh old worm as they call him <laughs> oleus vermius um <laughs> I love it, man. It just it yeah. this has everything. This story has all the good stuff so far. And this is such like a world building story. I mean, yeah. he wasn't probably meaning to do that. But in hindsight, it's like, God, he starts to really pull it in with this one. Um, and he, he opens the Necronomicon. He starts reading a little bit and he gives us a little gives us a little thing. And he says that a thought and a legend too hideous for sanity or consciousness. That's what he starts reading. Yeah. And, and just leaves it there. Yeah. I like, thanks, it, man. man. Thanks that you, uh, while waiting, that's what you were doing in your free time, man. Yeah, reading around the Necronomicon. The, yeah, around the weird folk. Yeah. Uh, there's also no. Uh, he points out that there's no fire in the fireplace. Yeah. Ugh. Char- Look, Charles is a freak. Yeah. Charles, he's, or the- or he's just dense. Sure. <laughs> sure, but he seems to know that, like you know. Yeah. What, what's what's a good character to associate this? particular thing with i'm trying to think of like oh that's weird oh well i guess it's just like a oh, I guess. The cartoon dog with the dumpster for the fire around him and he's like this is fine <laughs> yeah right but i know i'm I, it's, it's yeah. escaping me now but there's definitely a dense character that's like oh well good mask <laughs> all right i'll be in here waiting well to get he's murdered. he's well it's either that or he has some kind of like preternatural knowledge right like it's just like he's going with the flow because it's like in him a little bit right yeah, but also where we go after, right after this. Yeah, it doesn't get crazy after this. They just go to church. I'm just saying, but like right before the church thing and like yeah. him recognizing a certain item mm-hmm. where you're like, bro. Like, <laughs> <laughs> There's a dude that looks like he has a, fa- a mask for a face. Yeah. There's some lady in the corner that's barely even alive. We don't know what her story is. And they have the Necronomicon. Yeah. Amongst other occult books as well. Yeah. And then no fire in the fireplace. Something else is about to happen before yeah. it goes tits up, as they like to say. Yeah. In the UK. Um, right. That uh, that I would have just been like, you know, I would have pulled out, you know, my pistol. Like, freeze, you know. Right. He's like, nah. Yeah. Let's go. I mean, he would have shot him and it would just went on. And the yeah. old man would have looked down and looked back at him. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so he's hanging out reading uh <laughs> reading the Necronomicon. And then the stroke of eleven happens. When eleven struck, however, the old man stood up, glided to a massive carved chest in a corner, and got two hooded cloaks, one of which he donned, and the other of which he draped round the old woman, who was ceasing her monotonous spinning. Then they both started for the outer door, the woman lamely creeping. And the old man, after picking up the very book I'd been reading, beckoning me as he drew his hood over that unmoving face or mask. Ew. Yeah, it's pretty gross. They get out their uh, occultist attire. Yeah. Right in front of them. Do they? They don't give him anything, right? They're just like, where? Where were you brought? No, because uh, I don't think he's been initiated yet. Right. Okay. That he would have earned his cloak and mask. He would have if he yeah, well, completed we'll get, what happens yeah, later. We'll get to that. Um, but I love that uh, the woman was lamely creeping. <laughs> yeah. Weird. It'd be funny, though, if like while it was happening, he was like, ugh, lame. Yeah. <laughs> but they go out, and uh, the old man makes sure he grabs the Necronomicon. Yeah. And they, uh, and with his unmoving things, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and heads out. Um, and he's led outside, and there's this, uh, they describe this, this throng of cowled clothes cloaked figures that poured silently from every doorway, which is like uh, all those yeah. empty houses that seemed empty. They were just filled with these cloaked um, mask wearing freaks. Yeah. That are just like sauntering out into the street. Right. And they're all heading to the top of this hill at the center of the town um, where this, you know, this church that he saw before um, is located. Um, and he follows this, this crowd, which is completely silent. 
And we get this line that I love that he was, uh, quote, jostled by elbows that seemed preternaturally soft and pressed by chests and stomachs that seemed abnormally pulpy. Ew. Ew. Ugh. <laughs> Ew. It's, you're like, he's just walking amongst, amongst a bunch of bruised fruit, like old fruit. Yeah. Right? Ew. Right? Ugh. Or like, yeah. yeah. How does it, the feet sound? Are they just like dragging feet, you think? Like, but there's no noise. Like, there's no noise. And, I, and you know, and he even notices uh, shortly that there's no prints in the snow either. Yeah. Which is like, we'll get to it at the end, but yeah. are they ghostly? Are they corporeal? Yeah. Like, Are they floating? Uh, something. Are they floating? <laughs> <laughs> does um, I float? Exactly. Um, and it's, 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 it's pretty awesome, man. I mean, cause we get up to the top of this, um, they get to the top of this hill and like, before they go into the church, he kind of gives like a little shout out to like what the, um, the graveyard looks like. And it's, it's kind of, kind of really awesome. Cause he talks about there's these death fires dancing over all the tombs. <laughs> and this is like an old, like new England legend, or it's even actually an old European legend that, um, on certain nights, uh, these the blue flames would dance over the graves of certain of certain graves, mm-hmm. um, which is a great little scene. Like it's already weird, but even the even the graveyard is active in its way. You know what I mean? Yeah. You're definitely there during a certain time. That like this only happens under certain conditions. He even mentions that like the one uh, constellation, um, Aldebaran, I think, yeah, um, is is like perched on top of uh, the steeple. Okay. So it's like you're definitely in some kind of like everything is aligning right now. Like yeah. There, you were yeah. there at a at a certain time. This has at, to happen at a certain time. And eleven o'clock is it's an interesting time. I think it's just so they get some time to get there for midnight. Sure. Okay, that you makes know? sense. Yeah, because they're obviously not quick. No, no, because if they're you know, whatever they are. Yeah, they're like <laughs> the the procession begins at eleven p.m. Right. Join us after for a spider cider and deadly donuts. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's when you used That's to call it. back in the day, the Vincent uh-huh. Price Haunted Hayride, when you would like yep. call to get times and stuff. Mm-hmm. At the end, it would be like, you know, the spooky music in the background. And the guy would be like, thank you for calling the original Haunted Hayride. And like then he'd be like, you know, after you mm-hmm. after you would disembark, join us at the pa- <laughs> the pavilion for spies or cider and deadly <laughs> donuts, you know? And it, I, it used to be my favorite thing every year, That's but great. I had to... I always have to attach it to something, you know. For some reason, while you're reading that, I just hear the uh, the music from the uh, J.K. Cinema Ghost episode in the background. It, it was that, or it was just like some <laughs> silly, spooky, like you know, yep, old like haunted house record. You know, I love it. I love Igor it. Chains Dragon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was know, just gonna say rattling, rattling yeah, chains. Yep, yep. That's great. Uh, yeah, <laughs> the '90s were a wonderful time. Oh yeah, man. Hell yeah. Um. <sighs> God, I lost my place. Sorry, I had to hit you with spider <laughs> no, it's cider. Great. It's there. great. That's it's great. Okay, so the the I'm sorry, the death fire is dancing over these tombs. Um, and he says that it reveals gruesome vistas, which is like, what? Yeah. And then though they're not casting any shadows, the flames. Right. So like they're making vistas so like a, a like almost like a landscape type yeah. deal. Yeah. And and they're they're not casting any shadows, but uh that's yeah, that is weird. Yeah. So it's almost like they're kind of cutting through some kind of veil. Maybe. Yeah, yeah, like, yes, I, exactly. I think that, yeah, because this is happening, like I was just saying, it's happening at this time. There, something is certainly happening or it's or it's mounting up to this this yeah. thing that's about to happen. Uh, you know, weird things are occurring, cats and dogs living together, mm-hmm. yeah. you know. Necessary. Exactly. That That's what we're, we're dealing with right here. Um, and also the church is is phosphorescent. It's glowing. Oh, oh, all right, you know. Let's <laughs> He's keep just like, yeah, that too. Pe- yeah, let's yeah. keep walking with these people. Yeah, yeah. what else? He's, oh, yeah, I'm going to go. Perfect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Whatever they are. Um, so they walk into the church and it's dark, um, but like this weird kind of light effect almost happens. Like it looks dark, but then he gets in there and it's like there's this weird change that occurs. He he very much realizes that he's crossed some kind of a threshold. Right? He's almost, and it's, it, oh, he's almost like Frank Drebin from like Naked Gun, just like, you know, like. <laughs> Charles Drebin is this guy's name. It's yeah. his dad. He's just like, you know, <laughs> you know, all right. He's like, oh, lovely hat. You know, like, whatever. You know, like, just like. Yeah. Yeah. He's like, right. nice beaver. She's like, thanks. I just had it stuffed last yeah. week. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I think Frank Drebin was from uh, uh, Massachusetts. If you check the wiki, I think. Yeah. yeah. 
He's from Kingsport, Massachusetts. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so um, he talks about walking into the church and um, that there's this trap door uh, to the vaults and the crypt that is underneath and it's right next to the pulpit, right? Mm-hmm. And um, they're all going down it and he's once again has to use the his his his, his verbiage that they are squirming noiselessly into this uh, into this space. Like what does that even mean? Uh I don't know. It's almost like he's talking about something that might squirm, that might be squishy. But no kind of noise. Thing. You know what I mean? Like, that's what I'm saying. Just like what is I, like because I think it's almost like something that's like slimy or squirmy isn't gonna make the noise that like people with shoes on would make, right? Sure, but you'd hear some kind of like you're right. I'm, I think it's just it, it. This is all mood, man. This is this is weird fiction, right? This is right. So totally like, making the whole almost yeah. Like you were saying, like maybe they're half in, half out at this point. Yeah, you know. Yeah, like they're spider cider all the way. I mean, that's... right, right. You know, maybe <laughs> uh, above some of their masks, they have like towels wrapped up above their head, mm. like they just got out of a shower or something. Ooh, a Yuletide shower. And they walk around and they they stare at me from behind with their glasses smiling. <laughs> oh no, that's my wife. Oh, hey, <laughs> oh, not a worm cultist. Is your wife? Yeah, no, 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 no. <laughs> nice. Yeah. So I want to roll this episode. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the procession, quote unquote, um, after they go into this um, um, crypt area, there, there's another secret passageway below this crypt. Another below below thing, right? We're 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 back into the. Uh, we're yeah. back into the uh we're going deep down yeah we're, we're going, going deep down but we're back into the area of um um cat rats in the walls right yeah because then he he says that they 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 come into this area and he says uh quote a vast fungus shore lit by a belching column of sick greenish flame and washed by a wide oily river that flowed from abysses frightful and unsuspected to join the blackest gulfs of immemorial ocean yeah it's literally a, a heavy metal album cover like what yeah you like, yeah. But there's a whole paragraph, and you know what? I think we need to hear uh, Greg read it. Yeah. Then I saw the lurid shimmering of pale light and heard the insidious lapping of sunless waters. Again I shivered, for I did not like the things that the night had brought and wished bitterly that no forefather had summoned me to this primal rite. As the steps in the passage grew broader, I heard another sound, the thin, whining mockery of a feeble flute and suddenly there spread out before me the boundless vista of an inner world, a vast fungus shore, lit in by a belching column of sick greenish flame and washed by a wide oily river that flowed from abysses frightful and unsuspected to join the blackest gulfs of immemorial ocean. Yeah, so it's, it's wild. It is. Um, and I know I just mentioned it like three times, but like I remember coming to this part again. I was like, "Oh my god, this this is right after Rats on the Walls," and this is like okay, like this is yeah, he, this he's is, he's into this like underneath fungus area. Yeah, we're like, there's so much more space down there than you would expect. You know, there's so much room for activities. A. Yeah. Yes. Um, <laughs> this instead of an instead of like a bottomless abyss. Um, actually, no, we get that too. But this a, a river comes. This black oily river. Um you know, comes out of kind of like nowhere from this abyss. And then this belching column of sick greenish flame. I mean, it's sick. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. Uh, But that's the scene here. You've got like fungus kind of thing going on, like this whole like weird, like fungus cavern kind of thing, this black disgusting river. And then the center is this, this green flame that's belching from the center. Right. Right. This is definitely a heavy metal cover. Yeah. For sure. Usually there's some giant creature standing in it with like a sword or something. Yeah, or, or this is something from uh, the album the kid from the gate has. Remember when he shows <laughs> yeah. all the lore? He's like, no, yeah. they they have. <laughs> and he's like, like standing on the bed with like the towel over his head. You know, yeah, like, he does. He does. He like, like recites the fuck. Yeah. Mouth the words. <laughs> the dark <Yeah>. gods. <laughs> <laughs> that movie rules. Oh yeah. By the way, we're gonna cover that movie in um, uh, Cyclopean Cinema, folks. Beautiful, beautiful. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I'm sure Steve, uh, Stephen Dorff would appreciate it. He would. He's like, he anything, even, anything to bring some spotlight to my career. Anything. Even though the kid that played, what was it, Terry? I think his name was. That kid was way cooler. With the glasses? Yeah. 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 The, the, the the metal um, nerd kid? Fucking yeah. awesome. Yeah. Metal nerds have become super cool. Like, even back then, they were kind of like, you know, eh. Yeah. Now you're like, that guy's way, way fucking cooler. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um... <laughs> 
<laughs> so we get that whole scene. Thank you, Howard. There it is. Yeah. Um, and they they begin to engage in the the Yule rite. Uh, once again, um, Howard telling us that it was older than man and fated to survive him. Um, and then he he then he talks about this weird and he kind of throws it away, but that there's this weird amorphous thing in the corner, squatting far away from the light, but piping on this flute. Yeah. And I love that because it's it's kind of just like what the hell is that? But like because of all the stuff that's going on, he kind of just notices it and doesn't really get a chance to like. Well, at this point, I'm like, okay, that's that's one of these things without a robe on. Maybe, yeah, maybe. It's not um, like you know, it's part of the ritual with mm-hmm. the side right is mm-hmm. to be there. Maybe it's got like one of those like sumo undergarbs on. Is this the humiliation ritual? <laughs> I mean. He might, they might check, you know, pick a different one every hundred years to go do it. Maybe. And then later they're like, did you see Gary? <laughs> Is this one of the fungus flabby beasts, but this yeah. one has a, a flute? Yeah. All right. Yes. Okay. I like it. Um, And after he's playing his little, his little piece, his little flute music piece, which it's maybe we have. It's cross buns. Right. And if we hear flute playing right now, that means Ken's a good sound designer. Um, <laughs> you son of a bitch. <laughs> So the flute playing summons a horde of these things, right? Yeah. Um, they're tame, trained, but they're this weird hybrid. They've got wings. Um, and here we go with the Lovecraftian anti-description, right? Where, like, no, he says that no sound eye could ever wholly grasp. <laughs> and then we get then we get the, the word salad of the description, right? So. Yeah. Uh, he says, um, quote, they were not altogether crows, nor moles, nor buzzards, nor ants, nor vampire bats, nor decomposed human beings, but something I cannot and must not recall. So basically at that point, it's like mash all those things together. Yeah. That's what you have. Yeah. Yeah. Your worst nightmare. Yeah. And that they flopped limply along <laughs> half with their webbed feet and half with their membranous wings. Ugh. So bat wings, that's membranous wings, or yeah. something of the like. Yeah. Um. And as they reached the the, the throng of celebrants, uh, the cowled figure seized and mounted them, that's to ride them. Yeah. And <laughs> and rode off by one along the reaches of this this area with the river, um, and into these pits apparently that that are also I guess to go further down to whatever further chaos is is, is down yeah. there. <laughs> Um, now, or real to, quick, like, before, cross the slime river to get to like the next point to like right because now is the season of evil and they have to cross the river of slime. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yep. Is that like the fourth or fifth Ghostbusters reference just this episode? Uh, I, I'm counting two off the top of my head. Yeah. Okay. So uh, there might be more, dude. There's always more. There is. Come on. Anyway, um, so before we go further, um, these creatures, uh, these will become to known as the Biaki these creatures. Okay. Um, they were never named by Lovecraft, uh, but they were later used by uh, August Derleth in a posthumous Lovecraft story. Have we covered August Derleth on here before? Uh, I don't know. Was he, he's not the religious buddy, right? Yes. Okay, the guy who is. kind of, yeah, he, yeah. he spread the word. I'm not going to go too deep into it, but he was the yeah. guy that helped spread the word about Lovecraft, made some erroneous claims about copyright, and it kind of stopped some th- some people from using Lovecraftian things, even though they had no right to do it. Yeah. Dungeons and Dragons would have had the Lovecraft mythos in it and possibly could have spread the word better, but no one can really know. But uh, yeah. August Erleth, um, a hack. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> his stories are terrible. Yeah, we um, have covered him. Yeah, you, you've uh, yeah. mentioned uh, I just wanted to bring that up because that creature is the Biaki. He shows up in like the Call of Cthulhu gaming scenarios. He show, they show up in a bunch of other um, uh, stories, I believe. Um, I'm kind of a Lovecraft purist, so I don't really know the other ones. You know, crucify me if you want. <laughs> hey, no, man, it's like me. I don't play Souls like games. I only right. want from software. You know, I got gotcha. you. I got gotcha. you. So uh, Charles uh, resists this uh, this madcap fun that's about to occur. Yeah, he's like, no, uh, I'm he, not mounting some some shaved English bulldog with right, wings. <laughs> right. Uh, even when his guide points out the family resemblance <laughs> on this mask-like face, yeah. it's like, mm-hmm. what? Yeah. <laughs> wait, it's like, wait, that's a mask, though. Yeah. But right. look. <laughs> and then shows him this, uh, I guess, it's is it a watch or a ring? I think it's a watch. It's a watch. It's a watch, that, yeah. yeah. Um, with his family's coat of arms. 
and he recognizes that it, it, it had been buried with his great, 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 great grandfather in 1698. Yeah, it's a At hell of point, uh, record keeping. Yeah, yeah. He saw a picture. It was on a painting somewhere. You know, yeah. in his. It was on a painting above a fireplace. That's exactly. While, while he was swiffering uh, some uh, brandy in a, uh, mm-hmm. in a in a in a glass. And he would fondly look at look upon it and and yes. ponder what what kind of conversations they just yeah. may have. He was like, "There's old Phineas Drebin." Yeah. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> nice. But yeah, that's the moment once you see like the it like look at the mask. Yeah. Look at my, and then he sees the watch. That's where like yeah. everybody on the ground, you know. <laughs> like, yeah. you know. Yeah, he's Dream Cop or whatever that character is. Yeah, or no, you just yeah, Night you end cop. up you, you end up becoming like, you know, bad boys. You're Martin Lawrence from Bad Boys yeah. at that point. Just screaming wildly. Yeah. We you know, shrill shrieking voice. I don't know why this guy turns into a cop, but I'll, let's go with it. Because at that point, that's <laughs> your, my, my only reaction in my head. It's, it's, it's I, don't, like, <laughs> I don't think this character saw any 80s movies in the 1920s. Sure. Well, I don't know. Hey, if you have a pistol, that's when you draw down, dude. If a you see lock pistol, yeah, he's got flint, one shot. Yeah, right. <laughs> Guess who's getting it? Guess who's yep. getting the first one that gets close? Yep. The one with the mask is the one that's getting it. Yeah, right. Ugh. Um. So, look my, but look. <laughs> So as the, as the horror is kind of heightening, it's kind of like tensioning. They're like, get on the thing. Come on. This is we're going. This is the real thing. You know, we're about to go. You're about to see some like eldritch sights. Yeah. Um, but like kind of one of the one of the Byaki monsters kind of like moves a little bit and like they're trying to like keep it in, in, in you know, in control. Um, it knocks off one of the wax and masks from his uh, from his friend and when he sees this he is so freaked out he jumps into the oily river yeah like he's like fuck it i'm out yeah because yeah, we never get to see what's under the mask of krumpus you know yeah it, same kind of thing yeah 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 so and he even says uh quote before the madness of my screams could bring down upon me all the charnel legions these pest gulfs might conceal <laughs> i love it yeah I love it. In underhandedly insulting, man. Oh yeah, it, it's a, it's yeah, it's a underhanded compliment. So, cut to, <laughs> cut to, after he, uh, you know, rage quits or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, what, know, does, how how scary must that have been to jump into a? Yeah, it's ooze, like black ooze pool. It's like either the slime river from Ghostbusters two. Or like I don't know, some kind of like river of faces from like Mortal Kombat or something. You know what I mean? Like yeah. it's along those lines, or like, like the, one, or like the, the bog river of sticks or something. The bog of eternal stench. That, or the bog from Lord of the Rings with the dead elves in it. Mm. Yeah, this is just all, like blackness. Yeah, all good references. Or or Big Trouble in Little China, Black Blood of the Earth. Oh yeah, that too. And he's like, "What do you mean oil? No, I mean Black Blood of the Earth." Yeah, you idiot. Mm-hmm. Oh, Jack Burton. My hero. Um, hey, man, I wish I was on the Pork Chop Express. You know what I'm yeah. talking about? Yeah. So cut to after he has this horrific experience. I guess he fainted. I guess. On the way down. Yeah, because he awakens in Kingsport Hospital. Um, And he sees this is like, it's Kingsport. It's the hospital. This is like, oh, it's the modern edge of the town. It's not I, like, this is not the area that he had seen. This is like... Um, you know, he doesn't have the conclusion, but I kind of got it. It was like he was there on a different, like it was like in the edge of perception or something. Like he was only able to go there because of his lineage or something. You know what I mean? Yeah, this part of town, they're like they have the talkies there now. Oh, right, know. right, right. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then he's told that he was rescued from Kingsport Harbor after footprints revealed that he walked off of a cliff. All right. Yeah, so at this point, it seems like, you know, they were is transported. That search? Is that like, is that like, does the church and the and the thing exist? Oh, we'll get to it. We'll get to it. Yeah. Um. He's and he's he's kind of annoyed. He's, I would say scared almost to learn that he's near Kingsport's old churchyard. Um, And he's transported and he's transported to St. Mary's Hospital which is closer, which, excuse me, is in Arkham. So he's outside of Kingsport. He's, he's, he's happier about that. Right. Even though Arkham is not great. Either. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, but <laughs> gotta love this in the hospital at Arkham. He's allowed to read a copy of the Necronomicon so he can find the passage 
that so disturbed him when he was at that weird house. Yeah, because the every hospital library just has a copy of the Necronomicon. No, just later. Arkham. But that's what's okay. funny. It's like there's a loner copy. Like there's is yeah. it like all beat up and like it's like here well here's our copy of the Necronomicon. It's earmarked. <laughs> it, seriously. It's it's like I thought there's only supposed to be like maybe like maybe nine or ten copies of it, maybe in the whole world. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, like in the ninth gate, there's only a few. I don't know. So yeah. he, he he decides to read us this this uh, this little paragraph that he pulls from it, and uh, we'll have Greg take us out on this. The nethermost caverns, wrote the mad Arab, are not for the fathoming of eyes that see, for their marvels are strange and terrific. Cursed the ground where dead thoughts live new and oddly bodied, and evil the mind that is held by no head. Wisely did Ibn Shakabau say that happy is the tomb where no wizard hath lain, and happy the town at night, whose wizards are all ashes. For it is of old rumor that the soul of the devil bought hastes not from his charnel clay, but fats and instructs the very worm that gnaws, till out of corruption horrid life springs, and the dull scavengers of earth wax crafty to vex it, and swell monstrous to plague it, Great holes secretly are digged, where earth's pores ought to suffice, and things have learned to walk that ought to crawl. Necronomicon doesn't, uh, doesn't seem too fond of wizards, huh? Well, it's not that it's... It's almost like humans aren't meant to mess with this stuff, and when they do, they become corrupted. All right. I'll take right, it. so, uh, so as I take the ending of this is that if you're a wizard who's dabbled in, you know, I would say even dipped your toe into this kind of stuff, <laughs> <laughs> more than dipped their toe, um, that their even their dead bodies become so corrupt that they can, you know, corrupt the worms that are eating them. And if it's a, I guess if it's a, an especially oh, powerful wizard, that the the worms that are eating his flesh are becoming these things that you know, like they said, that have. They've learned to walk, but they ought to crawl. So, and that his flesh fats and instructs the very worms that gnaw. So just the fact that this guy is so evil and so learned in these these evil ways, um, it it ter- it transforms these these worms, worms into little cultists. Right, because of the things that they used to participate in. Yeah. Okay, so now yeah. we have our heading. <laughs> You're heading? No, I so said, now we have our heading, where we're going. Oh, yeah, yeah, Because, yeah. like, you know, the whole time you're like, oh, are these, uh, like, yeah. people that have been part of, like, you know, blah, blah, blah. No, okay, we have our answer no. there. Yeah. These are worms that were eating, you know, corrupted wizard bodies. Yes. That started going, I want to participate in the ritual. Well, I have to now, because mm-hmm. of the magic within this corpse. Yeah. Start participating in all these rites and rituals of old and of you know, Elder Day. Yes, the Elder and, Times. Yeah, and the Elder Times. And some of the wizards were basically the his old family. That, I don't even know if it's the wizards. Well, I mean, it well, could whoever be. Whoever it ate was yeah. his old, they ate, were his family, the ones that were hung as witches. Right. So these could be, and that's why they wanted to look like him. Yes. And they ate, and that's why they showed you the watch that was buried with his great-great-grandfather. Yes. They partook. And yeah. his lineage would partake yeah. in these rituals. So these mm-hmm. worms corrupted by the flesh of his ancestors yes. wanted him to be there to partake in this for him to carry on the lineage. Yeah. Holy shit, we got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Almost like they were bringing him there like, hey, you're you're one of the real people, people. Yeah. What, what are we supposed to do now? Yeah, yeah. let's <laughs> hop on these yeah. w- wing mud creatures. Mm-hmm fly off and you show us when we get over there because we haven't been able to crack this nut. Yeah, because when we get over there, there's the really weird, really weird thing that's down yeah. the hall down here. Yeah. You, you got to see this. Yeah, it's He's like, you, I don't, don't want to see that. You tell us, you know? Yeah. And then he jumps and they're like, yeah. Try again in a hundred years. Yep. Yep. All right. Well, yeah, man. And this is a Christmas stuff. <laughs> right. <laughs> Meanwhile, people are singing all the uh, the, the Whoville songs. This guy's beneath the earth in the honeycombed uh, mountain yeah. area, going down to uh, unlitten grottos yeah. with 
green flames and oily rivers. I, dude, that's what I want to do on Christmas. I don't know about you. <laughs> I'll tell you what, I'm cool with the dinner and beer. Uh, afterwards, it's like an after dinner entertainment. Kind okay. Of thing. You jump okay. on your, your rotted uh, yeah. vampire bat monster. You and all your cousins of a similar age. Yep. Don't forget your wax and masks, and we do yeah. it. And yeah. your ropes. So you walk down the street, mm-hmm. puff a J. Yeah. You're like, all right, man, you want to see? <laughs> All right, let's do it. You want to go to that church, man? You want to hear all the? You want to see what that that weird stuff Grandpa was mumbling about? I found it. I found it. Let's go do it. And you're like, okay. Hey, how did you find it? We were smoking a J out here last week. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but also, if you think about it, this, this kind of this whole story could kind of be a metaphor, also of like. I don't know if you, if you like you have your family that you see all the time. But let's say you travel like I don't know. There's cousins you never see or something, or like right. family you don't see often, and you go to their house for Christmas, and you're like, "What the fuck is wrong with these people? No, you're I'm like, related to them. What is like, going on? He's in the mashed potatoes. Yeah. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. Oh god. Well, uh... Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> those are just the noises you make. Yeah. And if you're young, you're like, there's no presents under the tree. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. We open them on Christmas Eve for the family and Christmas Day for us. Yeah. Mom. You know, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but, you here. know, it got a little bit weirder here in uh, Kingsport for uh, old Chuck. Uh, Chuck yeah. Drebin. Um, <laughs> At least. But, mom. yeah, it's. um. Yeah, man, I, I love this story. I mean, I, oh, like great. I said, I, I read this every, uh, I read this every Christmas Eve. And um, back in 2018, in December, no less, during the Yule Tide, um, my wife's friend was getting married, and we, uh, she's in Massachusetts, and we were just happened to go. I had no idea, whatever. I'm like, okay, yeah, let's do it. We're we're on our way. We're at the hotel, and I look at the map. I'm like, we're only 25 minutes from Salem, which means. 26 minutes from Marblehead. Yeah, and you were like, we, we've come all this way. She didn't care. Uh, <laughs> and I didn't know we were going to be close, so I was like, shit, I didn't bring any, like, you know. So I went, there was a Barnes & Noble, like, right across the street. I went and picked up a, a copy of Lovecraft's Tales, made sure that the festival was in there. Finished the uh, finished the wedding. The next day, I was like, come on, let's let's just drive over. We're so close. She's like, yeah, yeah, sounds good. So we, we checked out Salem a little bit, but then I was like, alright, let's go over to Marblehead. Um, I had a map from this website that has a bunch of stuff about Marblehead concerning uh, Lovecraft, and we went up to the old burying ground uh, where they just you know the, the the passage where he talks about the you know the fingernails of a decayed corpse. Yeah, and it looks just like that, and it's amazing. It's from like 1642. You're like, that's old for over here. Yeah, and um, I sat there and I read the festival in the graveyard. Sick, bro. Yep. Sick, sick stuff. Yep, and it was. It was really great. Um, that's also the same graveyard where the famous scene in uh, Hocus Pocus where he says, this is ice. That's the same graveyard. Okay. Yeah. Not in Salem, even though they say it is. What jerks? I know. I know. Disney jail. Yeah, exactly. Don't get me started on Disney. Um, <laughs> they're, they've got some kind of Lovecraftian person in charge over there. Some yeah, kind of someone with a Eldritch wax monster. mask. Yeah, with a wax <laughs> mask. Like, there's a bunch of wax masks over at Disney headquarters. Yeah, let me tell look, you that. Yeah. Look, we're I human. Look, yeah, I look like Walt Disney. Look, your mouth isn't moving now. Yeah. We'll work on that for the next visit. <laughs> 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 but yeah, um, you know, for any Lovecraft nerds that may be listening, um, really big, really, really big thing for me when I got to do that. And uh, I, I giggled like a schoolgirl the whole time. It was amazing. <laughs> so I've been to Providence nice. a bunch of times. And that's an amazing trip, but like I actually felt like really close to Lovecraft when I when I when I did that. It was I was like expecting him to come around the corner. That's how like and be like, oh, oh, J- oh, Jason, <laughs> what is that that you're reading? Yeah, it's one of your collected works that gets sold at bookstores. <laughs> yeah, burn it. <laughs> yeah, right. It's like, Howard, do me a favor. Um, all those letters, go burn those. That's not going to work out for you. Yeah, <laughs> couple of, couple of stories. Let's erase those two. Yeah. <laughs> Hey, there's a particular name of a cat. Yeah. <laughs> Which one? Nick. Uh, yeah. Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh, pal. But that was my father's cat. Yeah. Well, different times, buddy. Mm-hmm. Yep. Anyway. <laughs> 
So uh, you like this one? What do you think? Oh, I love it. I mean, it was the first uh, story I heard. Obviously, I sat on it for, you know, a couple nights putting together the uh, sound design for, for the episode we released over at Other Dangers. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, it was my first, like, real introduction of actually, like, hearing a uh, one of his works. This was, like, what, a year and a half, two years before yeah. we were like, let's do Learning Lovecraft. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, yeah. no, I, I really enjoy it. It's got a special place in my heart. Yeah. Um, just being, yeah, like I said, the first thing that I uh, I partook in that was yeah. anything Lovecraftian. Well, mm-hmm. knowing that it was Lovecraftian because apparently right. everything's Lovecraftian at this point. It is. Um, <laughs> yeah. So His no, tentacles yeah. are everywhere. Yeah, right. I, I definitely, yeah, I'm a fan. Uh, I love it. Um, yeah, I, I weirdly just cracked the code at the end there after you reading it, and that's why these episodes are special. Well, hey, man, that's 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 kind of the fun of these. So uh, for me now, I, I like to see that, like that, like you know, the, the light bulb goes on sometimes when we read these stories. Like, oh, that's what it is, and it's like, yeah. oh, I like this story now. Yeah. Well, <laughs> and yeah, I suspect, you know, the, the the just the writing. You know, a lot of times yeah. I'm just like, I'm like, what is this guy? You know, I'm just like, no. And then it's like, oh wait, right. Hearing it from someone else's mouth that's actually saying it back, right, uncrosses the uh, the wires there, and I. I got a clear channel to the old uh, brain stem. Yeah, man. Well, that's that's the festival. Mm-hmm. Uh, I wish we were reading it near uh, Christmas, but we already have that in the feed. You know, yeah. folks can uh, indulge in that. And uh, if they want to, they can come back and listen to this one during December. Yeah, come on. <laughs> Open up your presents and listen to us talk about wax and masked uh, monsters. Yeah, and, and 80s, 90s cop movies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. and copious Ghostbuster references. Yeah, well... Well, Ken, next time, we're covering Under the Pyramids with Harry Houdini. Woo! This is one of those ones when I was going, I was actually, I just reread it the other night because I was in a little Lovecraft binge, and I was like, I really can't wait to see Ken's uh, reaction to this one. Yeah, I'm excited for this one. You told yeah, me this, about it like, like during like the second episode we recorded. It's just fun. It's a fun story, but it like, it takes badass Harry Houdini and mashes it together with Lovecraft in ancient Egypt. It's it's a lot of fun. I, I really like this story. Some people yeah, give right. it give it shit, and there's a weird little twist, like there always is. And I like to see how you uh, you uh, deal with that. <laughs> no, it's nothing well, mind shattering. Just weird. The, the twist isn't that Houdini pops that shirt off, is it? He pops that shirt off on like page one, bro. Yeah, he's always shirtless. That guy. Yeah. Oh my god. No. <laughs> So that's coming up. Uh, so if you're, uh, once again, like a, our little spiel here at the end, if you're going to uh, follow along with us, go ahead and read Under the Pyramids. And I wouldn't be surprised if another episode of Cyclopean Cinema is on the horizon. Yeah, we got a good one coming. So, uh, yeah, anything else on uh, on the festival? Uh, you know, next time you're at your uh, family's Christmas event, look around, poke around a bit. They might just be some kind of... Uh, worm creature that have, has evolved into uh, some member of your family. Check the yeah. closets for cloaks, gang. Uh, also, check the bookshelf for a copy of the Necronomicon. Right. Apparently, everyone has one. When all else fails, accidentally fake like you're talking and try to smack a mask off. You know? That's a good one. I like that one. Yeah. Or oh, you're tired. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh. You know, like, the mask flies off and you're like, I do it! Uncle Stu's like, yeah. Like, oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> Uncle That's a Christmas Stu. story. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, now I know our first uh, short story we're writing. There it is. All right, folks. Well, once again, we find ourselves lingering on the edge of the abyss that Lovecraft so masterfully presents. Thank you for joining us for this episode of Learning Lovecraft. I've been Jason McKittrick. And I've been Ken James. And we'll see you beyond the walls. Mm-hmm.